debate for presidential election 2023. Uh, possible candidates for that presidential election uh, are represented by their supporters. In this debate, we have Mr. Prince Sharif represented President George Manawia for the 2020 presidential election. Also, we have Mr. Otavius Gilman. Mr. Gilman believes that all of the candidates in all of the political parties are not the right choices for the Liberian people, and he needs somebody other than those candidates to get in the race. He is an independent, so he is supporting other candidates. Mr. Gilman is here to make that case. Folks, again, this is a debate of 2023 general and presidential elections, and these candidates are being represented by their debaters, or I mean by their supporters. Dennis, let's get started. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this another broadcast of Presidential Debate 2023, and this is focused on Liberia. As uh, Sunni said, other candidate is represented by the leader of our party, the talk show host, Octavius Gilman. Mr. Gilman, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Thank you very much, um, um, Antonio, and thank you very much, Dennis, for inviting me on this program today. Thank you. Representing CDC is Mr. Prince Sharif. He's the talk show host under the Palava Earth, and he's widely known as We Are Berian. Mr. Sharif, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Thank you. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to be on this platform. Uh, let me say uh, thanks to uh, the panelists. And I also want to say thanks to the people who are observing, that is our audience from all around the world. I want to say my people, your thanks very much for coming on, for listening to us so that all of us can share our ideas and come up with the best alternative for Mama Liberia. Again, we've not come to throw blows at each other. We've not come to, you know, insult each other, but we've come to express our ideas and be very civil. So if there is anybody that is here that you want to use this platform as a means to send directives or any derogatory statement, you will be dealt with sufficiently because this terrain is now a terrain that you use any insult. Having said that, you are welcome to our audience and let us enjoy this meal. That would be very palatable. Thank you. Thank you for that palatable comment. <laughs> so 2023, we're going to have presidential elections and President Weir, who is now the incumbent president, is going to be going against somebody in the election. So. What we've done uh, in our first debate, we had a match up between President George we are and opposition party of the ANC leader, Mr. Alexander Benedict Cummings. After that, we had, again, President George we are versus another potential candidate, Mr. Joseph Newman Buakai. And then the third one, we had President George we are going against a possible candidate, Abraham Darius Dillon. Tonight, we're going to have President George. We are going against other candidates, that is, anyone other than those political party leaders that we know. And so Mr. Otavius Gilman of our party is going to be representing other candidates. And Prince, we are Berian Sharif is going to be representing the CDC, arguing in favor of George Weir. Mr. C, the stage is set. Let's get it started. And talking about getting started, to you, our audience, we can't thank you enough for joining this debate. In this debate, we have four different segments that the debaters will be going at it. Segment number one, we will be questioning them or they will be making a case for the side, each of them support on electability and fitting them for the job. After that, we will go into accomplishment and track records. And then after that, we will look at the vision for the candidates that they are supporting. And then we will go into integrity, accountability, and judgment. We want to know what are these candidates that they are supporting have the integrity. They have the spine to hold people accountable and the judgment to make that call when the time is right. 
Again, folks, this is a debate of 2023 presidential candidate between other candidate and President George Manawia. Let's get started with our opening here. Uh, gentlemen, let's start with you, Mr. Otavius Gaiman. You are supporting anybody or other candidate other than the candidates that we know so far that might possibly run. Tell us, why are you supporting other candidate other than any of the political leaders that we know so far? And what difference will they make? How would they be able to give us the Liberia that we want for which you are making this case from your party, our party? Thank you very much, uh, 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 to the crew and 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 Dennis and to for inviting me on this program today to discuss issues that pertaining to our country and model in Liberia. Uh, let me make this explicit. That, um, this is not an English class. This is where we come and to discuss issues that are very important to our children and grandchildren and how we're going to leave legacy for them. Now, uh, I'm I'm somebody who, my name is Octavius Gilman. Um, uh, they, they, I'm the founder of our party. Um, it's not a political party, it's a voter education movement. Um, and I'm so happy to be part of that and in the front of that particular movement. Now, the reason why I've been engaged in the librarian politics for almost 16 years, um, I, will, I had the opportunity to work for the CDC and many, and Eddie Johnson led government. I refused to just sit in this country and, and get free money. I would do that, like all the young people. But I choose not to. I want to have a conversation with our former president, Ali. Um, the reason why I feel that I had a vision uh, and, and knowing the librarian politics, understanding it, that looking at the player and, 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 and like President George Weir, um, Joseph Nyeman Buwaka, um, Nyombli Kanga Lawrence, Ben and I, Yuri, Edizana Komen. When you look at all those people, you find out they are all the same. Um, 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 it just, what I've been saying for years that we need young person or we need a different breed um, um, to come up and take our country to the different, um, in a different, Tonight, it will never go down well with maybe 99.9 .9 of your audience, and I got it. And because we, the politicians in our country, have normalized corruption, they have normalized um, 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 so many evil things that we adapt to that particular um, system. So even when you're talking about change, it's difficult to get through the mindset of the librarian people. And that's what this new movement called Our Party are trying to do. We are trying to do something that never happened in the country, to focus on voter education. That's why when I look at President George Manu, we are, you, can, you can criticize him on certain issues, but I cannot blame him for everything that's going on in the country. And then if we want to change George Weir, if the opposition said they want to change George Weir, look at the hand that they're giving you all to, to play from. Better than Nigeria. Justin Yaman Boaka. Elizana Coleman. Nyombli Kanga Lawrence. That tells me right there that librarians are not ready. And that's why I'm opening the door for a new candidate, somebody different. Thank you, Mr. Gilman, for your opening that uh, you want any other candidate besides those we know. Let's go to Mr. Prince Sharif. Same question. Uh, again, thank you. Thank you. Uh, between times, we will be standing up. Let me say this to, to you and those that are listening to us. The best the best individual 
and party that can adequately emancipate the people of Liberia and put Liberia on par is the CDC and President George Manen We are saying for now. And there are reasons for which I'm saying what I'm saying. And I'm going to be giving these reasons. As a classroom teacher, you cannot be a teacher when you've not entered the class as a student. It's not possible. Before you can become a teacher, you must first of all be a student. Understand the terrain. Understand the feelings. Understand that particular atmosphere that you're operating within. I am saying this to mean that when you look at President Weir, he is not the normal politician that all of us know. This man is not the normal politician, a career politician, no. He came on board because he possesses the characteristics of a true leader. And what is the characteristic of a true leader? that makes him qualified above everyone else. This is somebody who understands the day-to-day -day language of the Liberian people. When I mean the day-to-day -day language, the suffering, the ups and downs, and etc., etc. President Weir can better articulate the view of the ordinary Liberian as compared to any other person in any other political party. President Weir is the only person that we have in Liberia whose money was never gotten from blood. I said the only person so far that I've seen he got his money from blood. That is number one. Number two, he is the only person that I see in the whole political arena that did not bring people down in order for him to get there. No. Which is very usual in our political setting. In our political setting, people say, for you to be able to survive, you must hate the man, you must criticize the man, you must cause the man, you must organize people, let them fail, let them destroy things. But President, we are came with a different phenomenon in our political arena. He came with that particular energy of, look, we cannot keep doing that one when people are here, people say, we cannot keep doing the same thing over and over and expect a different result. I laugh at them because you should not be saying it. The best person that should be saying it is President, we are. Yesterday, when people look at President Weir and Pope going to his head and say, we will kill you. He said, yes, my head. Kill me. And he told his supporters that let us exercise restraint. He has always preached this issue of peace, even when his life was at risk. President Weir is somebody who has always been with his people, even during the most difficult period of our nation history. He never, one day, back off he was there in the butchers and in the trenches when we were holding gun and killing ourselves he did not turn his back on us but he was always there to say look we can make liberia a better place so going forward i think from all indication the patience the wisdom and the deliverable president we are is the best person even though we don't know who is coming from the opposition camp because as i speak to you now they are afraid up to now, these people have never come up to say, oh yeah, uh, this is the person that will represent us. This is to tell the Liberian people that these people are not serious. So therefore, we're not getting credence. Thank so, you. President Weir is the answer to the Liberian people problem as seen by what he is doing. Thank you. Thank you. Little and right. gentlemen, if you just join us, this is Focus on Liberia. We are having presidential debate 2023. The candidate, President George Weir versus other candidate, Mr. C. Dennis, thank you, uh, gentlemen. We will now come to the first segment of the debate, having uh, you giving your opening statement uh, there, talking about the first segment, electability and fitness for the job. Mr. Gidman, the candidate that you have in mind must come from, must not come from any of the political parties must not come from any of the political parties. So we don't know their candidate, but there are characteristics that are, I, I'm sure that you are looking for, and maybe you didn't find the characteristic in these candidates that we know that may possibly wrong. So on electability, what are the qualities that your other candidate 
possesses for which you think they are fit for the job? Thank you very much. That's a pretty good question. One, I want you to be, um, 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 that's what I said, 95% or 99% of your audience tonight will not agree with me because I'm coming from a different um, place. Um, uh, now where librarians are comfortable um, on sitting or, or being. Um, when I, I travel a lot um, and I've been through a lot. So I, I'd rather to go alone and die alone. But let me please one party is God. When I look at the politician, when I look at, we all can agree, including my brother Prince, Prince that on this show tonight, that President George Manuia is not doing well. He failed the Liberian people. We, we got that. We can agree on that. But at the same time, this, the people that plan to replace President George Manuia, they themselves are not even competent to replace him because they are the same people, the same group of people with the same mindset. So I'm coming from a different place and say, look, okay, now, look, example, the CPP said President Weir is corrupt. Um, the chairman for CPP, I mean, for the CDC, Molu is corrupt. They name all those corrupt people. But look at the hair for the CPP. Nyombli Kanga Lawrence. Who is the chairman for her party? Another corrupt person. And look at the leaders in the CPP. Every one of them are corrupt. So that tells me we have a problem. And the only way we can solve the problem is Liberia, the young people between the age of 19 to 34. I'm not in that group because I classify myself as young adults. If we can come up with a different candidate to say, look, I understand that we won't change. President George Manuia is corrupt. He's not fit. We got that. He's not fit. But at the same time, we should not be in the position to replace George Weir with people like Joseph Nima Walker. Then why move just then why replace George Weir? And you're replacing George Weir with another corrupt person. Why are you going to replace George Weir with Edison and Comey? And you yourself know. If you put war crime court, Edison and Comey will not be on your list because he will never prosecute Eddie Johnson Salih. Because why? Joseph Nima Walker is there. So the best thing you can do is to say, look, let's find somebody who believe in their integrity. Let's look at integrity. Let's look at accountability. Let's look at repetition. I mean, these are things that we have to pay attention to. But now, because you find like right here, George, we are so much. So they will sacrifice everything to be in bed with Joseph Nima Walker. They will sacrifice everything to be in bed with Arizona Comey, who would never go after anybody who is corrupt. Because he cannot tell me, say, he will go after corrupt people and he leave it at the Johnson City or Joseph Nima Walker. So the answer right there is wrong. So let's find somebody new. Let Liberian young people believe in themselves. If we go alone, if we lose, that's fine. But we'll learn from our mistake and come back after six years. But I think that question is somewhere around the corner. So, so, Mr. Mr. Gilman, before you learn, uh, what makes that person electable and fit for the job? Whoever that person will be. And, 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 and thank you. This incident that just happened with, with Darius DeLong, um, supporting Musa Berete. It just opened the door. It just gave reason to what I've been saying for years, that we need an independent candidate. Because why you find Liberians believe in the law, including me, so much that this is the change that we wanted. But at the same time, I can't be preaching change. And at the same time, Musa Berita is my party chairman. I can't say, look, I'm the man of integrity. Then Musa Berita is my party chairman. And, 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 and the thing that Labrin should understand that we focus on Musa Berete, that they don't support Musa Berete or agree with Musa Berete, and Musa Berete is the head of the party. But Musa Berete is not different from Yomli Kanga Lawrence. Musa Berete is not different from Arizona Comey. Musa Berete is not different from Joseph Nima Walker. 
So you see why the independent candidate is ready now in demand that Liberia needs somebody new, somebody different, and somebody strange with a different mindset. Mr. Mr. Gibman, and, and I didn't quit and some this one so we can get to Prince. You said all of the other candidates that are being floated around or whose names have been floated around that they will be running, they are all corrupt. You even gave odd names. CPP, you can't find anybody credible. You said all of them, they are corrupt. So what makes you to think that all other candidates other than these people would not be corrupt? What's the justification? If Because the, the people that are corrupt that in the party is talking about, they are, they are all Liberian. So why, why should I believe that somebody, because they're not in the party, is that a yardstick for which they would not be corrupt? Yeah, you, you, you see, you see, it's this. I mean, I don't have to tell you. Look at the opposition that you guys want to replace George Weir with. Just look at it. Just, I mean, just Mr. Gibbon, I get it. You said you said we can't just replace George Weir with anybody in the opposition. Yeah. Ruling government, opposition folks, they are all corrupt. They are all Liberians. It got to be another Liberian. So what is the, what is the justification? I mean, what is the, the yardstick you're using? Or what is the assurance that any other person would not be corrupt? Okay, thank you. The first thing I want to see from that independent candidate, I want to know exactly your plan when it comes to the private sector. I want to know your relationship with every single name. I want to know your relationship with six people in Liberia. What's your relationship with Ellie Johnson Salim? Let's go back 10 years. What's your relationship with Joseph Nyman Boaka? Let's go back 10 years. Let what is your relationship with people the most ability normally kanga lawrence what is i mean i want to know where you coming from. so anybody who will not have relationship with these people you see as having questionable characters that mean that person uh is the kind of candidate you want <laughs> yeah and, and let me give you one reason why it's very yeah quickly we got to get a prince yeah the reason i make that yesterday because Abraham Darrell DeLong. DeLong did not steal any money or stole money from, the, from, from our government, but the relationship that DeLong found himself in with this corrupt people, it put DeLong in a position to even distance himself from Yomli Kanga Lawrence is difficult. Because All right, thank you, Mr. Mr. Gibbon. You, you, you will come in again. You will come in yeah. again. Uh, thank you, Dad. Let's come to uh, Mr. Prince Sharif. And uh, Mr. Sharif, we are staying on electability and fitness for the job. President Wea has been in power now for three years. We have seen uh, what he's been up to in terms of governance. We've seen uh, his uh, popularity or uh, dwindle. We see the CDC losing elections uh, as that, I mean, the way they were not losing elections before. Uh, somebody may look at that and say, I don't think President Wea is electable at this time. Uh, what would be the case that you will make? If anybody says that, thank you. But if anybody says that, that would be the highest level of insanity that no doctor can be able to kill. Let me say this. Electability, fit for the job. Let's first of all start from the reverse. Is it fit for the job? Let's first of all look at the physical fitness we will come to other things, but let's look at the physical fitness. Liberia is not prepared at this time to allow the executive mansion to be an old folks home or a retirement center or a place where people go there to get a few years. Then at the end of the day, our people will say they kick the bucket. The executive mansion is not meant for that. The executive mansion also is not a place and we don't need a president that will be an office ball. We need a president that will be physically fit to inspect projects. We need a president that will leave from the eight by four office and that will get on the street as displayed by this president and make sure that when he gave you a tax or when a tax is given, that he is on the scene to inspect and to make sure we will not mortgage our future or the future of our children for somebody who already God is about to carry him. 
we are about to see sweet roll, sweet carry on. Camilo to carry me who we will not make the executive mansion to be that kind of place. We want people who physically will be able to make sure that the job is done to go and inspect and see. My profession, I'm a classroom teacher and I'm a red train security man. It's supervisor for that matter. I don't sit in my office and get call. Hello, yeah. And when you say the other assignment going there, what do I do? And what they give us car. We move around. We go to check how the environment is, how things are going, how things are coming on, how the men that are on the various guard posts, how they are doing. We go there to go see it because our presence serves as a motivation. Our presence serves as a means to be able to put our men on the alight. If you are seeing what this president is doing, look, what this president is doing has never been done in the history of the Republic of Liberia from any of these political elites. Yeah, never been done. The person who tried, even though they did not survive, that was the late President Samuel Kayon Do. But you can see President are going at this project. He is interacting with the people. He is on the ground. He is making sure that these things are happening. That is one of the good characteristics of any leader that will succeed. You must make sure to evaluate with your eyes and see it for yourself because your presence boosts the morale of the men that are on the ground. Your presence will be able to encourage and motivate people who are doing the work. And that we are seeing it for the physical aspect. Now, is president, we are fit for the job. Let's go to, you know, we finish with the physical aspect. Let's go to the political aspect. President Weah is more than fit as far as I am concerned in Liberia. Among all of these people that don't even know what they want in Liberia, especially the people that call themselves politicians. Why is he fit? You are fit as a leader based on the decision that you make, my brother. The decision that you make will tell the Liberian people whether you are fit or you are not fit. President Weah is one of the men that have made some dangerous decisions. That have been in the interest of our people. And I will give you some of the dangerous decisions that President Weah have made or have taken. The decision number first, as somebody will say, we said decision number one. For President Weah to look at the executive, people that used to take $20,000 monthly salary, people that used to get $3,000 for scratch car, people that every six months they will change their car, people who used to leave from Liberia, come in America, can sit on their own cushion and government pay them. People who are just taking money and they were chopping it, washa washa. President, we are king. The first decision that he made that make him to be fit for this job is low. I will start for myself as a leader. I will slash my salary by 25%. I will go to the executive. If you know you want to work in my executive, you cannot take anything more than $7,000. You will take less than that. How many times has Liberian cry? That all oh, our money, government official, they, they eating our money. Based on the decision that President Weah took, we saw the adverse effect of that decision. The legislators, they were able to some extent reduce their money. Even though we're praying and we are engaging them that they should reduce it more. But today we are seeing a reduction. So is it fit based on the decision? Those decisions were dangerous. The harmonization process, it was dangerous. Many people say it will scare away the potential people. It will scare away those who have the ability to be able to produce. People who have the ability to be able to help this government. But Thank you, Mr. Terry. Fellow Liberian, let's look at the decision that you have made. People run away. In fact, people are willing now to help. Look, President, we are changing the whole political dynamics of Liberia. That if you want to be a government official, don't serve because you want money. Don't say because you come from America, you get student loan on your head, you want pay. Or because your horse, they come in mortgage, they come into your horse for you, go to Liberia. President Mr. Are, Sherry. Yes, sir. I'm coming, sir. President, we, we are setting we gotta, the basis Mr. Where, we gotta be, we gotta be brave. Coming, Let me lay my thought on this. President, we are setting the basis where Liberians who will go and serve in government will do it based on the law, based on the willingness, and not based on your money where you get for loan to go pay. Thank you. Yes, sir. You want to ask questions? Yeah, yeah th thank you. Uh, we, anytime we'll give you the opportunity to speak, we okay. want both of you to uh, limit it to two minutes, at most three minutes, because we, right, we have a lot of grounds to cover. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, sir. So before okay. we ask questions, let's go to Mr. Gilman. Mr. Gilman, any rebuttal for, for Prince? Your rebuttal. I mean, I, I mean, I don't, I, I can I cannot ask you with, with Prince. I will let the Liberian people decide on that, because, I mean, we all know that, that President Muya. It's a failure. Yeah. 
All right, let me uh, bring this question. Uh, Mr. Sharif, you said President Weah is fit for the job. He's electable because he has been inspecting projects and that every little market that is being constructed, he's there. He's been seen physically, you know. And so what we also know is that there has been reports upon reports that President we are at some point could not go to work for about four, five, six months. Somebody who does not show up to work, but will go show up uh, at an inspection of a project. Is that the fitness for job that you're talking about? Uh, my brother, see, let me say this. There's the reason why some of us have explicit confidence and respect for this platform. That when things are their platform is on record of providing informations that were not accurate and that were not appropriate and later on you came and you extended an apology and those of us who follow this platform religiously and by extension our members we agree to that particular apology and we say apology accepted what am i saying here my brother let me say this when you come up with allegations on this platform it must be based on facts Look, on the 18th of this month, President Weah was here. He did not go to job. On the 15th, he did not go. Look, we were not doing on in windows and myth or somebody jump out in the morning and say, President Weah, he not go to job. Then we look, these are things that we will not give credence to. Do you know that a president of the Republic of Liberia is not only restricted to sitting down in office and working? Do you know that? Do you know that? Look, we are in a modern world. We're supposed to be teaching our people in the village that you don't need to enter office to work. You don't Mr. Need to Cherry, are you saying President Weah has work. been working from home and Pres has not been going to his office? Is that what uh, you are confirming? No, I am not saying that President Weah has been working from home and not been going to office. What I'm saying is that whoever that is providing that information, it is false, it is misleading, it has no iota of truth, and I want to provide to the public that President Weah has been working. There has never been a day that President Weah has not engaged with his agenda. Every day, even as we speak on this platform now, President Weah is engaging his agenda and his people. He is working. President Weah is the only man in that country, as far as politics is concerned, as presidency is concerned, who don't even rest. President Weah don't even rest as we are here now. That man is looking at paper. He is communicating, making things to work. So to say that the president go to work eight months because you see car running or you see jogging to be going. So he's saying going nowhere. Look, these are myths that will not give credence to. These are gossip. These Mr. Are Sharif, gossip. Uh, hold on there. Incredible. I know you might call this one another myth. Uh, what we've seen and know for a fact, I've been mean, reported as well, is President we are will attend uh, any other occasion outside of the country, sometime to days before the event and we stay a day later uh before coming uh is that one of those things you look here and say this man is capable and fit because he shows up to events out of the country a day or two before and coming later i mean i mean just make it clear no, i don't know let me say this presidential function it, it is not limited to you being in the executive mansion let me tell you something see when you are the president of the Republic of Liberia, you are the chief administrator of the government structure. You are the chief administrator. What do you do? For each time the president goes out, whether it be a or wedding meeting, which I know he will not go there, or wherever, he is going there in the interest of the Liberian people. Remember when this president took over, the first thing people said, oh, you're going to Dubai. You're going to enjoy yourself. But at the end of the day, what we saw coming from Dubai, we saw the government of UAE giving the Liberian armed forces military highway. When this president traveled, he didn't travel because he wants to travel. No, he has gone to engage our international partner, knowing very well the damage that has been caused by the Ellen Johnson Salif led administration with this issue of corruption the loss of trust and etc etc so for each time the president attained this function he is not just going there because he want to go there he go there to meet with international partners he go there to be able to foster the agenda of liberia and you and myself so for okay. somebody the president show us somewhere two days then he, he come back and he thank goes, you mr sheriff all gossip we can play thank, thank you can pay your attention to
Mr. Thank Sherry, you, Mr. I want you to I want to give you the opportunity also to rebut uh Mr. Gilman, who calls Mr. Uh, Mr. Wea his presidency has a failure. What is your uh, report to Mr. Gilman? Let me say this. Mr. Gilman is one person that I respect. He's a brother and he's a friend. But again, what I will not do that President Wea have taught us and that we live with that particular belief is that don't be able to subdue or to suppress a man based on his opinion. Provide your facts. Provide what you can do. That is the opinion of our brother. If you are talking about President we are not fit for job, the man will not fit for job under his administration is able to accomplish all of these roles in less than six years, you're not fit, then I will agree with him. If somebody Thank is fit for the job, then under his administration, he is able to make sure that today as we speak, university tuition is free then you say you're not fit i agree with him thank, you, thank you friends for a job because Mr. Sherry, thank you reduce the salary or thank you of government official then i agree with him thank you that brings us to our next point which is accomplishment and track records Mr. C. thank you dennis and folks you are watching focus on liberia this is a debate between president we are and other candidate other candidate meaning any other person who is not a member or will not come from any of the political parties in Liberia, uh, Mr. Gibbon here is a, he is an independent and he is advocating for somebody other than all of the people that you know in the political parties in Liberia. Let's look at trial record. Mr. Gibbon, I know your task here is difficult. Yeah, no, this time will be Prince to start with. Mr. Gibbon started the last segment. All right, uh, let's come to Prince. Uh, Mr. Sharif, yes, what sir. are the accomplishments and the trial record that President Wea will be running on in 2023? These are the track records that His Excellency, the President, Dr. Sin Wea will be running on one. Freedom of speech, what we are seeing today happening in Liberia, it has never happened ever in the history of our country. Never, never, from Joseph Jenkins Roberts up to Madam Ellen Johnson Sully has never happened. For people to express themselves, to even threaten the life of a president, oh my Lord in heaven, Allah, to threaten the life of a president, say you will get gone, we kill you, we drag you in the street, but you go and you have a triumphant entry it has never been like that in the history of Liberia. Number two, for somebody to be able to give the opportunity to a common man from all the way, Bokonji, somebody from all the way, Zing and Wong, to give him the opportunity to attend the University of Liberia without paying tuition. These are some of the things that we'll be looking at. For you to be able to make sure that our market women, our mothers, all of us know the economy of Liberia. It's very, very important to our market women, to our mothers then. That's what boosts the economy internally. That's what helped to raise revenue. Do you know that the Liberia Revenue Authority have raised another, in fact, they have crossed the expectation again. Why? Because our people are engaging in their market activities under a cool atmosphere. Look at the amount of markets that have been built by our people. Somebody will say that only market, but do you know that the market also help our economy because of the shortfall in our own export like rubber iron ore and etc do you also know that as we speak president we are is the only president in the history of the republic of liberia c 1847 that is able to accomplish the buildings of road that is able to accomplish building hospitals and all these other things within just less than three years do you know that as we speak bond county nimba county and mount gibi the government of liberia have already acquired a grant from the international bank to build a modern school a school that is up to standard do you know that as we speak president we are is the only president in the history of liberia that has been so tolerant that the united nations trust and say look we will give liberia over to you president we are is the only president that they could trust to do that if anybody was going to win i'm telling you that the peacekeeping force of the united nations was going to be in liberia because they don't trust these people. But President Weah is the only person that you and say, okay, I will leave the country with you because we have seen your track record. We know what you can do. So let your country here. We turn our back to go. President Thank you. Madam Ellen Johnson said you were there for 12 years. 
and she was being ably assisted by the international community. Everything that she was doing, international community was involved. Everything. President Weir is the only president that is able to raise revenue. Look at the light today. Now we're jumping up. We're jumping up. We are excited. We are excited. The light today that we are seeing, these lights are erected on our own revenue. President, we are not going to carry money from anywhere. They say international community camp. These are money that are raised from the people who sell it in the market. The old man who get a store down water, sir. They how you call men who get a lay who want work. We raise the red food. Thank, 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 thank you, thank you, Mr. Sheriff. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank, thank you. And, and I like how you demonstrated how the international com community turned their back. I, I, I like how you show it, but let's go to Mr. Gaiman. Mr. Gaiman, we don't know the candidate you are supporting. I don't know if you can give us a name because we're talking about accomplishment and track record. So the Liberian people, when it's time to vote, they're going to be saying, I mean, what have you done for us? So let's talk about accomplishment and track record and speak to the accomplishment uh, listed by Mr. Sherry for the president, because you say the president is a figure that needs to be replaced. Go ahead. Okay, you thank you. If, 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 I, if that's what I said from my intro, that if, 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 if I sit here and 99% uh, of Liberians who are going to listen to this show today or listen to me when I agree with me because... And, and Mr. Gilman, that's your that's your tax. I want you to make the 99% to agree with you tonight. That's the tax. So go ahead, do it. It, it, it took us almost 170 some more years to destroy our country. It will not take us 50 years to fix it. So I, I just want to understand that. So the thing is that if you think that or anybody think that I'm here to fight check, you know, check prints, then mean I, I wouldn't have time. And you know, if, if I would go through every single thing that Prince said one at a time to say, oh, this is wrong, this is right, we'll not have time. Because you know 99.9% .9 of what this brother is saying is lie. One, let me give you one example. He said, President Weir, believing freedom of speech. What happened to Heron Costa radio station? That alone can answer every single question. If you believe in freedom of speech, why shut it down? That's it. So now let's move on to, I mean, look, I said this at the beginning and on my platform so many times that if you believe in yourself and, and with somebody with integrity um, that, that believe in truth, I would not sit here today and say, I blame President George Man and Weir for every single failure in our country. I cannot blame President Weir because no drinking water. I cannot blame him for no good roads. I cannot blame him for no good um, 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 uh, and no good education system in the country. No hospital. No, I cannot blame him for those things. I blame President with those things. Been there. There was a problem already when he took office. But the thing is, he knew all of those players that failed, that looted the country, and failed to prosecute them. One example: Eddie Johnson, Sally, and Joseph Yuma Buaka. They passing around. And they took responsibility. They said it, that we squandered it, that we run people resources. Why are these people, why are they criminal passing around in our country? That's the problem. So the thing is simple. If we're going to change our country, you can't just hit President George Manning Weir and say you won't change and be in bed with corrupt CPP member or CPP leader. That's my point. I want Liberian to come to the place where you can disagree with George Weir. You can get the problem with George Weir. He himself is, George Weir is corrupt. You can acknowledge that. But at the same time, don't replace him with another corrupt person. That's why I'm advocating mm. for a new candidate. That's why mm. with a group of small librarians that joining me to open and with our new movement called Our Party, our goal is voter education. And you summarize our problem in Liberia, it comes down to voter education. That's mm. why I'm happy and I'm excited to form the new group called our party. It's not a political party, it's a voter education movement. Where are we gonna go from school to school to educate our brothers and sisters? Say, look, if you want accountability, change the way you vote. If you want war and economic crime code, change the way you vote. If you want library in your district or in your county, change the way you vote. If you want good health care, 
change the way you vote. It comes down to voter education, and that is our problem. And that's why I'm focusing on with a group of other and, and the brothers and sisters who joined me to invest in that era. That way, I'm going to put my resources for the rest of my life to make sure librarians know exactly how important is the vote because your vote is your power, and your power is right in your hands. One more, Mr. Gilman. Uh, Mr. President, we are is now in power. Yeah. To say you're not going to argue with Prince is not going to cut it because in order to get him out of power and replace him with this ideal other candidate, you must convince the librarian people that he's not doing the job properly. Okay. So tell us why you think President Wea is not the best candidate and that he needs to be replaced by other candidates. Give us yeah okay let's look at i mean just i said this 2016 that just the thought of president we are becoming president so it, it was a scary talk just the thought alone i said oh look george we will become president in 2027 or 20 something or 2017. it was a scary thought to know that a man who couldn't i mean a man who even cannot even i mean explain a own platform, a man who escaped debate will become president. A man who cannot even, who don't even know the function of becoming senator, of being a senator. It was a scary talk. I said that. So it, I, I don't, I, I value time so much. That's why I spent too much money on my watches. So I don't want to take time here and, and, and take your time or take anybody's time and say, look, I begin to critique uh, President George Man Manning, we are where he good and where he not good. That man is not good. He, the only thing President we are good in is soccer. I mean, who else? How best can we explain this to Labrador people? Look at your country. You don't have a 15 go hospital. Labrador don't have system in place. We sit on social media. We sit on social media. We travel. We see these things happening. We see things happening in different different people countries. But our country don't have a fitting good address system. It's shameful, and that's why you find and people like us and young other people who say, "Look, the private sector should be our focus. Let's go into the private sector. Let's change our country from there." That's why I, I, I encourage all young people. If you know what to take, if you got what to take, go put your name on the ballot and stand for something. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Stay for something. Believe in your country that you can make it. And that change our country. There's nobody in the CPP that I can point to and say, look, they resemble change or they fit to replace George Mann and Weir. All of them are the same. So why Mr. Gimman? Yeah. Mr. Gimman, uh, you are on record, even here today, by saying President Weir has failed. Let me five or ten failures because if you say the person has failed you will have a good number of failures in mind so let's mean as many failures you know of uh that president we has recorded in his uh political record okay one let's go to let's talk about accountability i mean it don't take a rocket science to figure this out um if if the final minister tell you I took 25 million, 25 million out and put in a pickle truck, that means saying, not Octavius Gimel saying, I took 25 million dollars. The only country where it can happen that in Liberia, a final minister tell you, I took 25 million dollars from your central bank and put it in a pickle truck and took it to the, the biggest market in your country and begin. To share it and he cannot get count of that money and he still have a job today i don't need to be on i, I mean it, it can only work in liberia that's just it can only it only makes sense in liberia right there right there i mean if you can go into your central bank and take money whenever you want i mean then what else can we talk about what else can we talk about you see the problem here we have a country is ourselves, it's our mindset. If we can change our mindset, the way we look at issue, the way we analyze issue, we will get to the place where we are every off wall and we we'll be sitting down today in another man country. We're proud of it. Man, we're eating uncontrollable chicken. 
we who have the job get paid on time but brother i just no president we have failed the labyrinth people president josh money we have failed the labyrinth people you know i expect me to say oh look he gets three left that only work for two days then i should get him flower you don't expect me to tell you so no because you build one road and you know i joke a minute then as soon as the rain come it mess up then i should get you flower no man come on you gotta be honest here that's why if every single librarian can put your political difference aside for who you support aside and just look at look, look at the country for a minute say this is the country i came from this is the country i came from look at the country alone you know because of all young people every librarian talking about politics 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 when would you and i have a discussion on your private sector and that's why i said i focus it on voter education if we can force librarians and that's why we're starting from six to ten from sixth grade to tenth grade and we can educate our brothers and sisters in sixth grade to tenth grade to know the importance of the vote and tell them say your vote is your power and your power is right into your hand if you vote for corrupt person that normally cannot lower you will not have a good hospital in grand Master county if you vote for somebody who cannot even who don't even fit to explain their own platform that president george money we are your life will, will always be the way you know i mean look at you got almost close 85 percent of liberian young people between the age of 19 to 34 on your floor is thank that you that you want to live in no president george money we are i repeat it's a failure thank you thank you mr gibman and mr sherry i have a question for you i know we're going to go to the vision for the candidates that you are supporting you listed freedom of speech as one of the major accomplishments of president we are we are aware of mr samuel Tua saying let us weaponize and when he said that we saw weaponization taking place we saw radio stations being shut down we saw people being chased and pursued in even foreign country just because of uh, laissez passe and of recent again when a local radio station decided to allow the airing of a program we saw the government stepping in and said no if you made any attempt and so that did not happen we we also saw ministers of government were using their finger telling people to shut up whenever they were trying to express themselves so when you boast of freedom of speech as an accomplishment, the word weaponization comes to mind and the rest are listed. Is that why you call freedom of speech? You know, my brother, see, uh, let me say here, thank you for, for the question. Mm -hmm. But again, anybody who is listening to this intellectual exchange will know that uh, our brother Gilmer is just validating our point that yes, indeed, President Weah is the only option. The reason for which I'm saying and I understand my brother, you know, he has an agenda. You know, that agenda is to educate the young people relative to how to vote. I understand that. He has not come here. But you can see my brother, for example, support Mills Jones. In the gone election, he supported Mills Jones. Why is he not talking about Mills Jones here? Because he has seen that these people, their vision does not commensurate with the reality and has nothing true in it. My brother is here. He supported Mel Jun, which is very good. Mel Jun will look at money and give it to Gio Devil to go do business. Mel Jun will look at money and, and, and carry all the way to Bokonjiri and were giving money and all to, to how you call a, a fish in the water. We know that story. You and I know that story. But today, if my brother can distance himself from Mel Jones, that he cannot even put that platform out, I appreciate that of my brother. It means that we are seeing that these people, they have no agenda. And I respect him for that. Now to your question. Talk about Honorable Tua saying we will weaponize. Look, we must understand English here. And you understand we're in America. We are in the United States of America. When people speak, they speak from two different backgrounds. Either the literary meaning or the metaphorical meaning. These are things that you must look at. You cannot be in America and say somebody say because somebody say let's weaponize. You run with it and say weaponize me. Let hold gone. Let me running around. If it will not because I'm going to bring my arm, but anyway I will not do that. 
for somebody to say weapon now, then he say that the, the men say hold gun and be running around. Look, you can weapon the, the, the word weaponize is not restricted to arm. No, you can weaponize somebody intellectually. Do you know that words are weapon? Do you know that words are weapon? Yes, words are weapon. So for somebody to say we, we need to weaponize ourselves, let's look at the content in which he was talking. What was he talking? What was he speaking about? So sometimes you look at the contents for which the person is talking, then you look at either the literary meaning or the metaphorical meaning. Honorable Tua was talking about yes. us equipping ourselves for this debate, like what we are on now, going to our people, taking the message to our people. So when he talked about weaponizing us, he was not talking about physical weapon. He May was I interject, uh, Mr. That, Sherry? May yes, I interject? Sir. May I interject, yes, sir? sir? I like yes. the way you pull it that he could be speaking speaking lyrically or he will be speaking uh, metaphorically. So let me give it to you. At some point, grade school students were protesting because their teachers had not taken pay. If I can go with the two possible definitions that you gave us, then can we agree that when the security forces tear gas, those children, they were being, they were using their weapons when uh, uh, in Kingsville, let me learn, let me learn, in Kingsville, when those young men who blocked the road because there were racialistic killing taking place and the police intervened and live bullets were fired and some of them got killed, are you agreeing with me that uh, they were being, they were using their weapons? And also, when the EPS uh, attack of General Zeno Melu, today he's a dead man. He cried many times and no one went to his head. Are you agreeing with me that the words from Samuel 12, let a weapon now, were taking place? Is that what you're telling me? Uh, no, that is not what I'm telling you. But let me also say that all of these uh, examples that you have given, they are all not true. The first thing is, let's look at the student, the student riot. Look, Liberia is a country of law like the United States of America. As we speak now, they will stay, they stay running behind people to arrest them for going to the, 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 the Capitol building there. People now, as I speak to you, are stay there. Because, because, Trump, because Trump told them to weaponize. Now, let me say this. Honorable Tua made it very clear that he was never talking about any weapon. He, he made it very, very clear that he was not talking about weapon. Now, for you to say students, let me tell you, all of these things, we understand that the political parties, and that's what makes this government to be the best government. We understand that the political parties were using these students. Police did not tear gas any student. Police tried to control the situation. There were people who were stoning the president convo from on the other end. They entered the university campus and were stoning and as a means, and that was even the most, the most common force that the police use to be able to quiet down the issue by firing tear gas, which conventionally, when you look at the protocol that are used to be able to, you know, either disperse a violent protester, that is just the least method that we use. That is just the least method that we use, fire tear gas and let people disperse. So the was 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 at was any was student, was that is the first thing. Middle middle was flogged. Emmanuel uh, Savage was also flogged. I think you guys were, I mean, the, 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 the security no. force were being weaponized. No, Emmanuel Savage was never flogged. Zeno Middle was never flogged. Look, when, look, we are really? doing the till. We understand what somebody, what Liberian men mean when they say we flock you. Look, all of us, we are Liberians here. We ain't got nobody that ain't understanding our English here. If Liberia Messia will flock you or the being, hey, I beg you. This Zeno Miller issue is clear. The people came up. Well, Emmanuel Savage was, was working, working with crushes, his, my man. His family, his family came up. Let's go to Zeno Miller issue. Family came up and they underlined, they, they told us about right. some of the health complications that you were talking right. So it's okay. simple. Now, let's go to Mr. Mr. Sherry, if let I was there. One thing, Mr. Sherry, let me let throw one thing in there and, you can, and we'll give you one minute to just wrap up. Okay, the president sir. also said, Whoever insulted him was not going to walk the streets of Morovia, the street of Labra freely. Go ahead, conclude on that point. 
this is to tell you that this president believes in democracy. When the president means that you now walk the, the street freely, he wasn't talking about catching somebody, putting somebody in jail. No. What he was talking about, look, for example, I am a supporter of this president. If you insult the president, you think I will bring Babo and put it on my head and say, because you insult the president, hallelujah, hey, that will be singing for you. I will also talk. So you are not walking freely because people will also talk. There are people who are insulting this president on a daily basis. Are they walking freely? No, we are putting more on them. That's we, what the we, president said. We, we saw that in Grand Jire. We saw that in Zwedru. In Zwedru? Yes. What happened in Zwedru? When, uh, when Alexander Cummings and Yeka Koluba went there, the citizens there said Yeka was not going to walk freely. They were not using their mouth, they were using stones. That is not true. Uh, that is not true. Okay. To say that, that, that is not true. The first thing is that when few group of people have dissatisfaction, we always revert to the rule of law. And this government has always encouraged people to revert to the rule of law. But look, let me tell you something. People respond in a different way. First of all, how sure are you that these people, they were not opposition? That were the same opposition that were dissatisfied with the way you kept threatening their lives. Yeka said in the video clips I hear that you are going to slaughter people. Oh, you hear that? That you are going to slaughter them? When you look, certain Mr. words. Mr. Sherry, I, I want you to respond to service. To I, even I, make your I, own children. I take serious people. exception. Hold on, Prince. I take serious exception to your answer that uh, Emmanuel Savi was not flawed. Emmanuel, Emmanuel Savi was, was flawed. Let me learn. Let me learn, Prince. Emmanuel okay. Savi was flawed. He was bruised up. He was working with crushes, and you are saying that he was never flawed. And then talking about weaponization, uh, the former uh, AG uh, was his the police inspector, uh, Gregory Coleman. He was forced out of office. He narrowly escaped because those guys were acting on the words of Samuel Twell that we have to weaponize. And he ran for his life. Mm -hmm. So tell me that is not weaponization. No, that is not that is not weaponization. That is not weaponization. Right. And let me say that nobody forced the the honorable out of his office. Sometimes in a democratic setting, people have diverse ways of expressing their dissatisfaction, which mm. we do not encourage any medium of violence. We not encourage that. But to say right. it is based on the words of honorable two, people went and they did this and they did that. That again is, is, is not true. That thank again you. is not true. All Why right, thank you. That we condemn whatever action that happened or that was carried on by some individual who felt that they have issue and they could not use the same manner. But again, the CDC as a political institution has never sanctioned any means of violence. Never. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Focus on Liberia. We are in presidential debate. Number four, we have other candidates being represented by Mr. Octavius. Gilmer of our party going against we are burying Prince Sharif representing the CDC. Let's go to vision. Mr. Let's start with Mr. Gilman again. Mr. Gilman, uh you call President We are a failure. So the vision for education, the economy, healthcare, infrastructure, security, etc. of President We are, you don't see that. So what vision for Liberia do you see? This a deal candidate will have when it comes to education, economy, healthcare, infrastructure, and security that you believe President Weah is not going to carry out. You see, uh, President Weah got almost, I mean, two, two years plus. Uh, three, three plus. Okay, three plus. Yeah, thanks. Um, uh, uh, to be in office, and 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 I pray. From the bottom of my heart, I pray that um, he do better. I pray that he surround himself with people that will focus on his legacy, then their bank account. And I pray that he listen to people, to people like us that want the best for our country and now want the best for our, our account. Um, that we criticize him when he wrong, but also praise him when he do better. I pray that he surround himself with people that, that got the best interest. 
Um, because at the end of the day, um, we will all die. We'll all leave this earth. And at the end of the day, I'm not comfortable living in exile. I don't know about other people. Um, and one thing I got is my integrity. One thing I got is my last name. It's my reputation. It's, it's Gilman. And, 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 and from the bottom of my heart, I sincerely and pray that he do better. But I'm afraid at the same time, knowing that the type of people that are around him and their attitude that they bring to the job and their behavior, where they came from, um, um, it kind of troubling. And that's why I want all opposition, um, member of the CPP, young people, to say, look, you can hear Josh Weir, that's fine. But at the same time, don't just be in bed with politicians who call themselves in the CPP and they want to replace George Weir because they are no different. So I want the young people to think different and say, look, I'm going to join Gilman in the movement called our party because they are not a political party. They have a voter education. Because look, I don't, I don't have to say this so many times. That's why I said in my intro that on this platform tonight, 99.9% of Liberian would not agree with me. And I'm not in the business to con to convince them because at some point they will realize why I'm talking is right. We have to focus on voter education in the private sector. And that's why with a few group of young people that I got in this movement called Our Party, we are doing good. And we are waiting to spend almost close to $200,000 in 2023 right. to invest in our country, in education, in the private sector. Because our first focus is to help the women to go if we can help the woman to make market and educate her that her vote is her power and the power is nowhere else but in her hand mm -hmm. then we can bring the husband into the picture yeah. when so, we so, get the husband so, so mr gilman yeah as a result of that investment what do you foresee happening in education in healthcare, in agriculture and so on and so forth has a vision that such an ideal candidate will set for Liberia. what is it that you want to see that president that you don't think will be accomplished through president Weir. yeah and and, and that's what i said i pray that he changed and i pray that he changed the people around him and one thing i look for in the candidate is that he he or she begin to sing the song on the campaign tree and that candidate i don't know them it's a kind of baby because look if you can hold me a kind of when i'm wrong you will do better. Our country can change. But look at people like Samuel Torres around President George Manu Weir, who is comfortable stating, but he still have a job. Look at Liberia, I'm comfortable with President. If I ask Prince how much Donald Trump make today, he would tell me how much Donald Trump make. If I ask him how much your president in Liberia make, he don't know that trouble for me. So that's what I'm saying. And the only reason why you find our politician I would like to run people back. I'm comfortable with everything like that because why? We don't hold people accountable. If I were president today, if I were president today, my number one focus would be investing in prison and graveyard. Because there are people who need to die in our country before you and I can see the peace that we want. And we're not comfortable with saying that. You, you, have, you have some examples of people yeah. who need to die? And, 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 yeah, and, 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 and that's what I, I said. Ninety-nine percent of your audience tonight would not agree with me because I'm mm -hmm. coming from a different place. Yeah, different give me places. some names. If I were president of the people like Eddie Jones, said he, we would not be living. Ouch. And I'm, I'm saying it because if you cannot, so, you see, if, if we're not comfortable saying the truth, our country would not be in a position. Would not be in a better place. We so we so afraid. We don't want to piss people off. You know, no, oh. God did not call you. Let, let me say this. Let me say yeah, this. Yeah, I want I just wanted to say that we on focus on Labro, we do not uh we're not in the business of wanting people to die. So yeah, we're yeah, not yeah, part I, of I, I understand that, but if you bring people who are waiting to say the truth on your platform, then you should expect that. I'm not yes. here to play politics. And you know, because at the end of the day, it's my character is all I bring. I want my word to back what I say tomorrow. Because 10 years from now, it will be news against me. Okay, but how can you solve Labrian problem? When you still got people who corrupt, who sold the country, who damaged the country, are still living. And you're not even comfortable putting them in jail. Then you talk about accountability. Thank if you. my brother Steve, I'm comfortable 
and protecting him. If my Thank uncle stay, I comfortable protecting him. If my auntie stay, I comfortable protecting her. But then I'm talking about accountability. Look at Musa Berete. Th thank you. Example. Thank you. Thank you. Let, let go to Prince on the vision for pre of uh, President Weir when it comes to education. Don't tell me about school fees, <laughs> economy, healthcare, infrastructure, and security because uh, the school fee, there's no money to pay for it. So most of these schools are even suffering, okay? But let's go to the president's vision. All right. In fact, uh, uh, the allegation you made just now is not really true. It's not really true. Our children are going to school. Yes, there are challenges, but the schools are operating and they are moving on very well. Let's go to the vision of this president. Whenever we speak of this president, we bring what we call our PAPD mantra, our agenda. In this my hand here, I am holding a magazine called The Rising Republic. Promise gift. When you look in this magazine, it outlines the vision of this particular president. Can you send what us a copy? Can, I'm sorry. Can you send us a copy? Yeah. Well, uh, I, I, I will need to ask. Even though this, this, <laughs> I, well, I will need to ask somebody. Yeah. Because yeah. You need well, to I ask, ask for anybody. permission. <laughs> no, no, no. Not for permission. This is the only copy that I have. So I will probably ask somebody. Uh, okay. you know if they can help me with one I, to send it to you guys <laughs> yeah the government is Bobby, limited on copies of its magazine uh anyway i am not the one i was this was given to me so i can't speak to this uh, but again as i said i will ask to see if maybe somebody can help but having said that let me say this and let me provide this disclaimer mm -hmm. i am not the official spokesperson for government or mm -hmm. the official spokesperson for cdc usa my presence here, I am here as a partisan. The ordinary partisan that can be ordinary in the world, ordinary. I'm here. I'm not here as any official of government. Thank God, said me, I'm not official of government. I'm not official of government. I'm not nobody. I'm not even CDC authority. I get common man and aspirant for team money. Yeah. When you look in this PAPD, you will see that the president agenda is very clear. That even the man who has problem with hearing will understand it. The man who can't even see will be able to feel that this president's agenda is coming to fruition. Let's look at one. This president, when you look at this PAPD whole agenda here, he talks about power to the people. When you look here, in this thing, you will see power to the people. Pillow number one, power to the people. How do you give power to the people? Give the people the space for them to be able to exercise their democratic franchise by engaging government in their words. Are people speaking out today? What we are seeing under this government has never been under any other government. The proliferation of media institutions, the proliferation of flag by night politicians and political activists, we are seeing it today. When he said that, Liberians, I will give you the opportunity, I will give you power, it means that you will have the right to go to the pools and vote and nobody will turn your vote around like we saw. Even though people are not acknowledging it, but we saw it this going election. Liberians went to the pool. Their hands were not twisted behind them in order for them to be able to vote for a candidate of the president's choice. The president opened the political playing field and said, let's go into it. So if this president said that he will give power to the people, meaning that Liberians will not go to vote, then the political elites make decisions like we saw in 2005. Well, Liberians overwhelmingly voted for this president at the time. And unfortunately, the result was turned around in their favor. Let's just look at the issue of school. Do you know that as we speak today, here is the information. The government of Liberia is immediately planning to start a project in Bonn, in Nimba, and in Mangibi, a school project. Here is it. Let me just bring you the information is here. I know we don't really have the time. That was sometimes, you know, I can be saying that the time is not really adequate. But the president now is about to begin this project. The president is about to begin the project. The government, in other words, is about to begin the project. Here is it. Here is it right here. Let me show it to my people so they can see it. Here is it. My people here, look at it. 
And you'll see the project in these three counties. And these schools are not going to be Bawati schools. And these schools are what? High schools that will be built according to international standards. So what the president is doing, he is not only looking at the university, but he's also looking at the root. That is the secondary education. He's not only focusing on the tertiary education, but also on the what? The secondary education, because we must build the foundation from ABC all the way to 12th grade. And that's what this president is doing. As I speak to you, do you know that in Bapulu, a county that has been forsaken, that a project is undergoing, a million dollars hospital will be built in that place, in Bapulu? Are you aware of that? That is the president's vision in making sure that his people receive these basic services. As we speak to you today, look at what is happening in Morovia, to be specific for now. We are seeing electricity all around the place. For 30 plus years, we've not even seen LEC current correct. We've not seen LEC current. But look at what is happening today that we are seeing these things. Is it not the actualization of this president's vision as enshrined in this particular proposed agenda? Let's look at today what is happening in the health sector. Do you know that we have doctors that are away from Liberia undergoing training to come and help? in the health sector, which for 100 and plus years has been, in fact, people even look at that sector. Do you know that as we speak today, we have students who perform exceptionally well in YA, in the WAS, and some of them are now in other countries equipping themselves to serve Liberia? Do you know that as we speak, Liberia now, we have people in Israel, agriculturalists, that are equipping their knowledge to go back and help. Do you know that as we speak now, the president himself will be launching the government farm? Do you know that? Oh, I know more people don't know. But the government will be launching, the, gov the president will be launching the government farm where ministers are encouraged to go back to the source. This will be enshrined in also your term of reference that as a government official, go back to the source. Are we now going somewhere? As I speak to you on the 12th of this month, the 12th of February, we'll be having a trade fair that will see Liberians displaying their produce from the soil. And the president will be encouraging them. Don't be surprised if you see your uncle from all the way there out of River G or Grand G there coming to America for, to be able to advance his knowledge in agriculture. Don't be surprised because these are things that are happening. As we Thank speak you. to you, look at the TV education. The president is not only focused on ABC. But he also looked at the informal sector or, 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 or the informal education. People who are doing mechanic, people who are doing soap making, tar dyeing, and etc. We saw that. Look at what the first lady did. Took girls from Liberia and sent them all the way to China for them to go and learn. Who will benefit? They are Liberians that will benefit. Look at the project of the first lady. These Thank are you. projects Thank that you, are meant to be able to impact the people's life. So this president's vision is very clear and he is actualizing it. Thank, thank you. Mr. Sherry, thank you so very much, folks in cyberspace. You're watching Focus on Liberia. This is the part four of our presidential debate series. And this will be the final uh, in this series that we have organized. Prince Sharif is represented here. He's representing President George Manawia. Mr. Otivia Gaiman is here representing an ideal or other candidate other than somebody from any of the political parties in Liberia. Focus on Liberia has shared a link in the comment section. I tried to show you on the screen over and over. Wherever you see Focus on Liberia, or there's a link, click on that link and make your choice as to who is winning this debate or uh, in your opinion. There are about 177 of you watching the show from my end. Uh, we have only 17 persons that voted. Uh, we want you to participate. Let know who is winning the debate. Please help us by participating in that opinion pool. We will appreciate that. Mr. Sharif, thank you for articulating the president's vision. One question I have is, in the PAPD you talk about, it talk about providing one million jobs for the Liberian people. Do we do you have a number for me? Because when they wrote it, they had a number that number of one million jobs. We are halfway into the game. 
How many jobs have been created now by this president or by this government? Uh, let me say this. This president will achieve <coughs> his mission. He will achieve his mission. As I speak today, our brother, the CEO of this particular platform, which I'm also a member of, has provided job for people. When the president talks about provision of job, it's not only that you go sit down to the Ministry of Finance or you will go in government ministries, but to open the atmosphere. Like for example, look at my brother Gilmer. Do you know that Gilmer has provided job in Liberia? Oh, yes, I can say that on this platform. My brother Gilman that is sitting here has provided job for Liberians. Is that some of the jobs that we're talking about? Yes. You, Mr. C, two months ago, you sent money back home to invest in something. And now as I speak to you, how you call a clan when that picking that are in the area. Now he gets something that he is helping his family. That is another job that you've created. There are people on this platform that have businesses in Liberia. So when the government talk about creating jobs, look, let's not limit this to UNE. Everybody will go work at the Ministry of Finance, at the Ministry of, how you call, public work, and this, that. But basically, creating an atmosphere where you, Mr. C, that today you are able to invest and you get somebody that you're paying. That let my brother game on here, he gets somebody that he's paying. Let our CEO here, he has somebody that he's paying. Today, as I speak to you, even Lofa Julius, Lofa Julia has employed somebody in Liberia. One guy can be oh, holding food and say, he, he passes around, he say, eh, eh, I call, eh, folk, they can call it, I know, waiting around Africa or something like Across, Africa. across Africa. Let, let, across Africa. Let, let, let me judge a little bit. So, yes, based on that, how many jobs have the president or have the government created based on your statistics? Uh, let me say this jobs have been created on a daily basis. Do you, have a, number, you, do you have a number now? So to give you a specific number now is something that I can't be able to do because even today, job right. has been provided. Even today, today, no, 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 as we speak now, there are people who are providing job. As I speak to you now, Mr. Gilmore, two hours ago, the man communicated in Liberia so that at least his business that is there so they can employ a security. He has created a job. All right, so thank you. I cannot be specific on this to say, well, government has created 10,000 job or 6,000 job. We need to accumulate this number. But what I can tell you, even the number that is projected, it will go above. Thank, thank if you. If the government said 1 million, it will go above that 1 million. It will go above because thank there you. are people who are getting interest in Liberia and who are investing because the country is safe. They feel secure. Thank, thank you, Mr. Mr. Sheriff. We'll go to our comments and then you can respond. Uh, talking about the documentary show, Curtis B. Dolly say that should be a public document and he should share it with you people. But he said he needs to consult first. Sad for our country. No, no, no. I mean, I need to ask somebody. I'm yes. sorry. I need to yes. ask somebody because there's the only copy that I have. Yes. I want to ask someone so that they can send me one that I give it. That's what I'm saying. You may say, since 30 years, we just got light in that city where all the big book people Okay, talking about the light. Mm -hmm. That too is a problem. If you don't speak for the government, then how are you speaking from opposition authority? Uh, few more comments here. Conf oh, sorry. Uh, Dave Ja said, I give her on Prince. He deserved to be press secretary to Dr. St. Weir. Okay, uh, Martin Brown, focus on Labra. I just voted. The debate has no winner. Prince is just lying and shouting above his head while Gilman is indecisive from which angle he's speaking from. Absolutely, there no winner. Comfort Wilson, Brother Sherry, please don't waste your time because this platform is an opposition platform. I know at the end of this show, the people on this platform are going to say Mr. Gilman had won, but I know that you have won the debate. The, oh, go ahead. Otavius Gilman, you are using lots of innuendos. This is from Teddy Nyankun against the president and his progress rather than saying the truth or being factual. Again, this is from Mose. Mose uh, he writes, I can't even answer simple, I mean, he, he can't even answer simple specific question. So that means CDC and we are did not create any job. Hmm.
Okay. I don't know who is talking about Florence Broker say this man can lie too much. It could be me, Sia, or our no <laughs> like you. No like me. Are you the poor talking about? <laughs> Dennis, how can you not reading? Okay, let me read. Uh, right, because you Murphy Murphy Deco, Prince is just talking from one point to the other without showing us any evidence. Give us some tangible, even from the blue sky that we can use. Uh, go yeah, ahead. That's it. What is the employment rate of Liberia under we are compared to under Ellen around the same time in office? How many people have come out of poverty from building markets? You got dry face like your president. Prince, that one are you. <laughs> it is not a government sponsored project. It doesn't come from the budget. Thinking about the, the projects Prince was naming. Okay, this one is from Jenna Mianta Jacobs. But Gilman don't care if Prince win. The man said he's not interested in talking about politics all day or promoting his movement, our party. Rose Talu, all you people are worrying about in that country is money, money, money just for you to get the job and steal. Look at the job the president is doing in Liberia. You guys don't want to talk about the president. You people feel the president is not educated. You people who think you are educated will never do anything good for your country. And you people, please leave our president. We are alone for God's sake. You people, you people. You and this people. one aid from Emmanuel Juje de Kier, Liberians. We cannot escape history. The opposition political parties will do more harm than good to Liberia than the present ruling establishment. I agree with you on the bottom top approach on education in Liberia. The challenge with education is the leaders in the sector run their own private schools. Rules they are rules they are making now only favor them and not the entire public. Uh, Kumasa David, Prince, don't waste your time too much on FOL. Their minds are made up. Mm -hmm. Also from Pro Poking, those projects are good, but the basis should be put into place. Security or employment must be addressed. And there is someone who uh, keep making a comment. Let me find that comment that uh, we are we is not balanced. It's pretty sharp. Uh, the person kept saying that uh, why we don't have anyone from CPP. I just want to answer that we have had. This is the fourth debate. The, the first three debates were CPP candidate versus President. We are today's debate is any other candidate besides CPP or any of those politicians versus President. We are so please uh, follow. This one is from Francis B.R. Will President, we are conduct an audit to the past administration and current administration. Alexander Hayes, if President, we are government have created jobs. Why are people crying for pay? So how many jobs has the president created? So far, those are our comments. We want, uh, we want our debaters to comment on those questions and then we can... Someone addressed one to me here. Mr. Says you bring an individual with integrity to discuss issue and not Mr. Gibman who lies like those past 12 years Congo people. All right, let's stop it there. Uh, gentlemen, again, uh, let's continue to the final segment of the debate, which is uh, integrity, judgment, and accountability. And in this segment, we will be starting with Mr. Otavia Gidman. So, Mr. Gidman, remove yourself on mute. The final segment here is integrity, judgment, and accountability. We don't know your candidate. Their candidate is in the blue sky and so ideal and clean. But you can't even call his name. But let me ask you, when it comes to accountability, integrity, and judgment, tell us, how will your candidate handle these ingredients of a leader that we want? Uh, uh, let's say thank you. Uh, you see, that's why I'm not a member of any political party. Um, um, uh, my brother Prince, 
um, and other people try to tie them to to move, which, uh, okay, the stand-up barrel was one of my best friends, uh, and then the former Ben governor, uh, Mr. Jones, uh, which uh, I got a great respect for, and I always do. Uh, you see, and you you want and Prince was talking about how Mel uh, Jones gave money to Tango. He said that um, to the Liberian people, the money was not for Mel Jones. Um, Mel Jones. He said he gave, he said he gave the money to to Gio Devil and also fish in yeah, Bukonde. Yeah, I don't yeah, know Gio what Devil, that means. Like Gio Devil, I like Liberians. Yeah, Gio Devil pay taxes. Uh, 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 so, uh, but it's wrong for for people like Amar Kwani, people like Ali Johnson, Salih Kiss to take the money from our central bank and not give it back. Uh, you know, so why not he giving it back to the Liberian people, the market women, Yana Balls, P. Pocket? I uh, you know. So, Mel Jun did that. I mean, this man's legacy will live on, and we know that we know exactly what Mel Jun did, where he, where he took our central bank from, and where he left it. So it, there's no question on that when it comes to Melbourne legacy. Then George, we are legacy. I mean, you can ask any librarian if you just put politics aside for a minute and compare. It's it's it's, it's, it's kind of disrespectful to even compare Melbourne to George. We are so I'm not even going to do that. I apologize for that, George. Now, you see, and I don't have a candidate that I know about. I been that I can say, look, I'm going to back up on this show. Or talk about on my platform right now. My goal, I try to leave librarian politics and I pray I'm getting away from it a little bit. I'm focusing on our party where, um, I just found this this movement, um, and we are doing good. My goal is, and the, and the people that are behind me, um, to spend like I said, two hundred thousand dollars in Liberia in the coming from now to 20 to, to, to 23. Why are we doing that? We want to focus on voter education in the private sector. We want to help market women in all 15 counties. We want to invest into women. We want to educate people about the, the importance of the vote. My brother, if you understand librarian politics, if you summarize the whole problem in our country, it comes down to voter education in the private sector. Because if I can educate you the importance of your vote, you will not vote for people like Yomi Kanga Lawrence. You will not vote for George Weir. Because the first thing you will understand alone, if I vote for George Weir, I will not get hospital in Grand Basel County. If I vote for uh, George Weir, what decision he will make? And he did not make that when he was senator. So the problem, I don't want us to limit the whole discussion. And that's why I said people will not agree with me because of where I'm coming from. George Weir is not our problem. George Manu Weir is not our problem. He got his own problem. But if we want to address our problem in Liberia, we first need to look at our own self, the decision we made as an individual, as Liberians. How, who, who are we voting for? Who are we supporting? Are we supporting people based on the town we came from, the village we came from, the, the party we, we found ourselves in? Let's put our country first and let's begin to invest into voter education. That's why I, 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 I encourage every single Liberian. If you want walk and code, join me, join our party. If you want accountability, join our party. If you want education, join our party. Because if we can change the mindset of your grandma, that our vote is important. If we can change the Zogo mindset, that the vote of that person is important, we can change our country. I'm not here to focus on George Weir. I'm not here to spend the time to focus. George Weir is corrupt. George Weir is a failure. But I don't want librarian to focus on joy where and the opposition are better than joy where they know different. So that's why I need somebody young like you. You can come up with this and say, look, this is my blueprint. My first goal is to prosecute every single lab, every single corrupt librarian government official. I'm gonna lock them up. I'm gonna go after them, including their property. And I'm gonna declare my asset. I mean, if you can do that, we will see the changes. But you cannot tell me you support it like it like the CPP. They say they support and they again. Oh, I I, I CPP the CPP that. How can you criticize George Weir and Musa Benedict is your party chairman? How can you criticize CDC 
and your Mlikanga is your leader. That's right there. So that's why I encourage you, all young people that really love the country and not political party or not individual, join our party. It's a voter education movement. We have to change the mindset of our brothers and sisters, our grandma, our grandpa, and then we begin to focus on in the private sector. Let's invest into the private sector. We can do better. And I'm not yet, I'm not a politician. I'm a businessman. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Dennis, because of time, uh, we will allow Prince to, to make the case. And we will consider those uh, two uh, final uh, statements from them uh, as the closing. Uh, so Mr. Gibbon has just gave his. Uh, Mr. Sharif, you can come in. And uh, we are talking about judgment, uh, integrity, and accountability. Because of time, we have to wrap it up quickly here. Yeah, I think. Uh from all indication, and, and I must say to my brother that I respect him, you know, uh, I respect his view, and that's why he thinks. But uh, his views are not based on facts. To say that, look, we are in America. We should learn how to do things differently. You just say that and say, oh, the men are wrong. Oh, the men are this. And when you don't have a proof, then I think, you know, it, it has not been fair. But again, I respect his point. You know, I respect his point, even though it is not true, but I respect it. If I tell you that Musa Belete is a role, tiffy, tiffy, I can show you evidences from FIFA. As I speak to you, he is in court for somebody who said tax invasion or, you know, etc., etc. So I can show you that. If I tell you that this person is corrupt, I will tell you X, Y, Z, and I will give you an example. But that's not the issue. Here is the issue. Let's look at this president. My people, there are challenges in Liberia. One of the major challenge we are faced with is the mindset of Liberians. So understand that Liberia is for all of us. When president, we are free, all of us free. When you succeed, all of us succeed. That is one of the major challenges that this government is faced with. The mindset. Because it is the mindset that will make you to go and look at the pool that is supposed to provide current for everybody. You will unscrew the pool so it can fall down on people. It is the mindset that will make you that when you see the road the president built, then you take screenshot of it and come on Facebook and post different things and say, look at the road. It's poor. Only for people to go see that lie. It is the mindset that will make you to sit down and say, Honorable Two Apple, 16 billion in the car, back. You carry it, you run away. It. it is the mindset that will make you to think that President, we have took the 16 billion or the 25 million and carry it to his house. So the major problem that we are faced with is the problem of the mind. When the mind is adequately dealt with and transformed, I'm telling you all these things, they are just by the way. That's why today we are doing what we are doing. These people that are telling you, oh, President, we are this president, we are that, you just corner them one on one. Ask them. He will tell you, my man, actually, among all of the opposition, eh, the only person they are see are the president, we are, because the way the people proceeding. And that is it, the way they are proceeding. When you look at, for example, the CPP and say they have a good plan for Liberia, no. Why am I saying it? When you are electing criminals, yesterday we listened to Mr. Alexander Comis. Who is now out? Who told us that you cannot keep doing the same thing over and over and expect a different result? But this is a man who look at somebody who is threatening the lives of other people, who is insulting and denigrating our society, our society norm, and say the man doing well. Yeke Koluba is speaking and for the Liberian people on behalf of the Liberian people. This is a man who say we must do different things so we can get different results like different things talking about this a man who told us openly that he's fighting with some kind of behavior some kind of behavior he gets some kind of habit he get he's fighting with it oh look let me tell you this we are in america but it doesn't mean that everything we can copy we copy the good ones and the ones that we think they are not palatable for us we leave it with the people we respect them we eat and we move on the other way. We will not entrust that country with people like Benin Nigeria. 
who bought arms and gave me arms for me to go in boot to go for a war and burn all the houses. Then he said, I'm gonna trust him and burn down properties. He said, I should trust him. Then in that he said, No, oh, you are saying that I should trust a Darius Delon who don't have respect for the rule of law. Look, President We are is the only person now that is able to emancipate the Liberian people. Thank the you. example that President We have set. No other person, if we are not careful, will ever set that example. So we all need to work with this president. And I believe that at the end of the day, those challenges that we are faced with, yes, we are faced with challenges in the health sector, in every sector. But this president is moving speedily and rapidly, or he is moving on time and in the form and manner that is actually correct to be able to solve this problem. Again, I want to say thanks to you for giving us the opportunity i know people will call and will come in but thank you so far and thanks to my brother and mr gilmore honorable man uh, thank uh, you. honorable man all right folks uh thank you so very much again before we close this uh broadcast we want to give you another opportunity to participate in the vote of the pool that we are conducting to decide the winner of this debate so low for focus on Liberia, there's a link uh, to one of the comments that we have posted. This is it, go to it and participate in the debate. We will be closing uh, that pool very shortly. You, We have a 176 and we only have 47% uh, voted. Please vote, I mean, that is what we want from you. Please, please, please vote right now. We wanna close it so that uh, we can close the broadcast. Dennis. We just listened to two outstanding uh, Liberians uh, discussing and debating the issues about our country. Uh, what do you make of the, the performance so far while we no, wait I, for the audience to chip in? I'm very pleased every time we get together to talk about Liberians. I know we as hosts and our uh, people who run these things, we're in a very difficult position finding the people and uh, planning the show and taking all the heat you know, some will say, oh, you are not balanced. You hate the president. Some will say you hate the opposition and all that. But it's always a good thing that librarians can come together and discuss. Because far too long, those of us who our teenage years, we witnessed uh, war, things that disrupted our lives because people were not talking. We have not been discussing. Okay, I look back and say, with the uh, time we wasted, almost 50 years fighting and nothing changed. We couldn't really come together. Today, we still find a semblance of people don't want to talk because people are stuck in their ways. You are either left or right. You are either pro-government or anti-government. There's no middle ground. And so nobody or some people are not even willing to listen to the other side. So anytime we bring people together so as to share their views, uh, both on the both side of the aisle, still talking and disagreeing to agree, I see that it uplifts my heart. And I think that what we should be doing as Liberians, we should always talk, we should always disagree, we should always discuss the issue. Even those issues that we feel are no-go areas. Like for instance, the issue of Congo country, it comes up, every time it comes up on Facebook, people are so enraged. But these are issues we don't want to talk about because we feel that either it's tribalistic or either you know, people are divisive, and so we don't talk about that. When it comes to the presidency, okay, President we are versus opposition or anybody else, people are so stuck in their ways that they don't want to discuss it because either you hate the president or you are opposition or you don't like the opposition, you are pro-government or you are a sedition or you are southeasterner. And so we shut down genuine debates because of the, pos the positions we take. So it's a good thing that we always talk. Like him or not, Prince has a point of view. Like him or not, Otavio has a point of view. And we must be able to discuss them. And we at Focus on Libra try our best to bring all these different groups together so that we discuss. It's a difficult position, but that's what we want to do at Focus on Liberia. Focus on the issue, uh, uh, be very diverse, be very open-minded, balance and do the best we can so as to bring librarians together to talk and debate. So 
I'm happy that uh, both of them, both the, 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 our two debaters, were able to discuss the issues tonight to the best of their ability. And Dennis, uh, you are right. Uh, we are always in a difficult position. And uh, folks who are watching, you know, we know their feelings usually weigh on the side they support. So maybe when they see us asking tougher questions uh, on the other side, they just put us in their backs. We understand that and we are not mad at all because we know that uh, this line of contribution that we have chosen to our community, uh, we should expect that. On the issue of the debate, yes, we should be able to debate the issue. Uh, I am one person who believes strongly that the failure or the lack of opportunity for Liberians to have the better issue in the past, having these platforms for them to air their views, uh, more like gave room to them picking up arms and then we all saw what happened. But if we have this opportunity of debating the issue and disagreeing with one another, and, you know, and those feelings that will come in us will go away and some way, somehow we may be able to come to a place that we might be able to accept each other. And so debating the issues, uh, I think, is the way to go for us. Uh, those who don't want to debate, those who want to sit on the fence, it is their right. But I think the best thing to do is to debate the issues. We are getting you the results right now. We are getting you the results. Uh, many of you have refused uh, to, to participate in the pool. So uh, whatever result we give you, uh, so that will be, it will be on those who have just uh, voted. Yep, I think I see the result here. Right, and before you get the result, let's go to our program for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow and every, every other Sunday at 7 a.m. Eastern, uh, 7 a.m. Central and 8 Eastern, we're going to have the Hour of Purpose with Pastor Patience Blay Atal. Pastor Patience Blay Atal will be joining us on the Hour of Purpose. Also, tomorrow at 6 p.m., we're going to have the history of elections in Liberia from 1847 till now. Uh, in commemoration of Black History Month, we are having the month of February for history of Liberia. And so we're going to have three presenters. Mr. Josiah F. Joker will kickstart the, uh, the history series on Sunday with the history of elections, history and analysis of elections in Liberia since 1847. And then come Mr. Dr. George Clay Keir. He's going to be our guest from the 14th to the 28th. The first uh, topic will be the dominant presidency. What's the history, the effect, and reforms? The dominant, I call that the Kigon presidency. And then his next, we're going to be going into the Barclay plan. That's uh, President Barclay has a plan. And then we're going to go to the, the on the third, episode we're going to go to the uh the vision of our previous president starting with tudman or uh, starting with barclay to tudman turbot and down to the papd under president we are we're going to go all into that for the history month we're also going to have other speakers that will be here on focus on liberia for commemoration of black history month now let's go back to our results who won the debate mr c well, then uh, according to our result here, and so far, uh, the 100, at some point, we went to 200 and, uh, persons watching, but the, many of these people, uh, for some reason, did not participate. So we are only showing uh, the result of 60 persons. We got 60 responses uh, from uh, this pool that we have conducted. And of that, we have uh, Prince Sharif, netting 78.3 percent of the 66 persons who responded uh, to the opinion pool that we conducted we asked the question who in your opinion has won the debate of the 66 person who responded uh praying sherry netted 78.3 percent and mr otavia gidman is uh the one with the blue section all right he netted uh, I've not seen the percentage for some reason, uh, but we have nobody. Many people voted for nobody, and that constitutes 18.3%. Uh, so if you do your subtraction, those of you who are good in mathematics, you will know what percentage uh, Mr. Gaiman was able to obtain. 
It seems to be the message uh, Otoya government is selling. The people are not buying it. You say you want other candidates, but you're not telling us anybody. You want us to vote for nobody. We don't want nobody. We want somebody. We must have somebody, no matter how bad the choices may be. In politics, you always have somebody. Uh, Dennis, that's the result. Right. And I'm looking for a comment that was made by uh, Comfort Wilson saying, Friends, don't waste your time. At the end of the show, they will say Gilman uh, has won. That mm -hmm. from our pool has come to be a lie. Right. I say congratulations, so, friend. Thank, thank, thank you too, my brother. I think uh, you, you provided a very solid point for what you believe in, and I respect that. And you are also a winner. You are a winner because you put forth your point. You know, you were very articulate in putting forth your point. So. I respect that of you. You're a very professional person. You are a job creator, unlike many people who just condemn, 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 criticize. You are a job creator, you know, however we see it. That is your point, and I think you are also a winner. You are a winner, and I respect you for that. On that note, we want to be closing our broadcast today. We say thank you so much to uh, Mr. Sharif. Or we are burying. Sorry, we didn't give you the chance to define we are burying because we have heard enough. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but to just to just conclude, Mr. Mr. Dennis. Uh, to just conclude, I'm sorry. I, I, I want to also thank one second, Prince. We want to also thank Mr. Octavius Gilman of our party. And want to thank our viewers for hanging in here with us. Keep your dial set here at focus on Liberia, where we educate, we elevate, and promote all things Liberia. We are all Liberians. We are one people, and we can do our best to keep our country to be that glorious land of liberty. Now, your closing comment, for Prince, you have 30 seconds. Yes, sir. Again, I want to say thanks to every one of you for giving us the opportunity. To those of you who are watching us, we want to say thank you so much for your participation. Well, uh, I see that all of us are winners. Nobody's going to take the glory tonight. All of us, uh, we won this thing. We were able to put our point across without any effectives, and I like that. Again, I want to encourage you. The CDC USA will be going for her convention. And uh, Team Mane, which I am a member of, I am a part of, uh, we hope that all of you will actually be able to support our team. That is Team Mane. Go on the page. You know the page under the Palava Hut. You know my personal page, Prince Arif, and support us. Again, I want to say thanks to uh, all of you. In a special way, I want to recognize Papi Flomo, who has been there for us, doing everything, making sure that we are up to date and up to standard. And also to my brother C. S. and that coin again after, or you know, he stay opposition. I have not taken that particular thing away from him. I know C. A. is an opposite, but at the appropriate time, we we'll bring the document, we we'll display it. But again, I want to thank everybody. Thank, 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 thank you, man. Thirty seconds. Yeah, uh, but, yeah. First of all, let me say thanks to you guys uh, for giving me an opportunity to be on your platform and to say thanks to Prince. Congratulations, brother. It was a good, uh, I mean, you explained your point and, and you sold it to those who believe in you. Uh, uh, saying the truth um, is difficult. Doing the right thing um, is difficult. And I'd rather to go alone and die alone. Um, and so that I believe in myself. Um, that's why I, I, I you know I, 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 I live librarian politics and I'm going in a different and you know i'm going in a different place where i want to educate and my my brothers and sister back home i want to invest into the private sector um and i want to focus on the people i want to focus on my country and not political party or an individual i want all liberians to come together we can disagree but let's just put our country first let's just believe in ourselves that we can do it nobody going to do it for us we shouldn't take politics like we are enemy we are all one people we are all brothers and sisters. We can disagree and the poor God first. Believe in yourself that you can change the country. I encourage all Liberians to please join this movement called Our Party. It's not a political party, it's a voter education movement. We invest in the people and they go and they we the people are gonna invest in our children and grandchildren. You gotta change the mindset of like that. We should have good luck. All right, that will conclude this debate. And our closing song is taking a home. Thanks, everybody. We all love you, man.